So let's talk about angular momentum. Angular momentum is a lot like linear momentum, which we have here. You just translate the equation directly to its angular form. P becomes L, M becomes I, V becomes omega. So not another new equation to learn, just a translated equation. There is this equation down here where we say L is R cross P, our cross product, this X here, uh, tells us that we need to do R P sine theta. What that means, if we look at it, if we have, uh, this is for a particle moving in a linear fashion, so we have some velocity here, really we have some momentum here, that's a vector, and it's moving this way with respect to some point. Okay. Now if you take R to be the perpendicular distance from our point to our line of travel, then our angular momentum is just going to be RP. You don't have to worry about the sine theta because theta is 90 and we know sine theta is 1. If you do not know um, the perpendicular distance from the line of travel to uh, the point we're going around, then you have to worry about the angle. Um, and I'll draw a picture of that. So here, if you do not know the perpendicular distance to your line of travel, then are our points from our point straight to our moving object. And that would make this angle here theta. And then you'd have to worry about the RP sine theta. So it's best if you just find the perpendicular distance to our line of travel. Down here, we have the right-hand rules for finding the direction of the angular momentum. Now, this is true for all cross products. You do your fingers in the direction of the first vector, in this case r, and then you swing them over to point in the direction of the second vector, in our case p, and then your thumb points in the direction of your answer, which is our angular velocity, angular momentum. So in the case up here, we would put our fingers in the direction of r, so they'd be pointing up, and then we'd swing them to the direction of our momentum, which is pointing to the right, so our angular momentum is going to point into the page at that point. Now when we do conservation of angular momentum, this is a lot like conservation of linear momentum, where the total momentum before equals the total momentum after. That's all you really have to do. Most of the time, the moment of inertia is what's changing, such as an ice skater pulling her arms in while spinning, and that changes the angular velocity, but unless there is some external torque on the system from friction or something twisting the system, then your conservation of angular momentum will be true. So let's try a problem. Here we have a boy. He's running up to this merry-go-round that rotates around its center. Diameter is 4 meters, so it's the radius we're going to use is 2 meters. The boy is coming from the side, and he's going to be running towards the merry-go-round. He's going to jump on and land right on the edge of the merry-go-round, 2 meters from the axis of rotation. So for our conservation of angular momentum, we're going to have a before side and an after side to our equation. Now on the before side, we're going to have the angular momentum of the boy before plus the angular momentum of the merry-go-round before. After, we still have the angular momentum of the boy plus the angular momentum of the merry-go-round. Now, for the boy's initial angular momentum, we're going to have to figure that out. So the angular momentum of the boy, let's do that over here, He's a particle moving in a straight line, so it's going to be r cross p, which in this case is going to be rmv, because our uh, distance from his linear path of travel to the axis of rotation here is r, the radius of the merry-go-round. So that makes it nice and easy. Uh, we don't have to worry about an angle or anything like that. So his initial angular velocity is rmv. Oh, and we said the radius of the merry-go-round is capital R, so let's fix that. So the angular momentum of the boy is rmv. This is before. The angular momentum of the merry-go-round is zero initially because it's at rest, so we can disregard that. 
uh, the angular momentum of the boy afterwards, well now he's just a particle on a rotating disk. So we're going to say it's the eye of the boy times the angular momentum of the boy plus the angular, the angular momentum of the merry-go-round, which will be the eye of the merry-go-round, times the angular momentum of the merry-go-round. Now, the angular momentum of the boy and the angular momentum of the merry-go-round are going to be the same after because they're now connected, so that we can use that. So we'll have RMV equals the eye of the boy, the eye of a point mass going in a circle is going to be MR squared, times this angular momentum, that'll be our omega final, which is what we're looking for, plus the eye of the merry-go-round, which for a uniform disk is one-half mr squared times the omega final. So one of these r's cancels out, and if we rearrange this and solve for omega final, we end up with mv over mr plus one-half the mass of the merry-go-round r. And if you plug everything in, you get omega final is 0 0.818 radians per second.